We've been in the emergency room four times in less than a week. Find out why next. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. Well, we are actually not living amazing right now. We are challenged. We are full-time RVers. We've been on the road almost three years. And we, we're facing a medical crisis now. We're on day eight. And... Whew. Yeah, ironically, um, you had just said the day before, imagine if, if one of us was incapacitated. Each of us is one injury away of being a burden on the other. Because if you're a full-time RVer, you're basically, you're, you're everything. Yeah. You and I, you're everything. Yeah. If yeah. I had gotten sick at home, you know, in, in a house, I'd have neighbors, I'd have doctors, I'd have people that could help, friends, church, and all that. Yeah. So we're, we're kind of pioneers out here. Paul and I met on the road. We were both single for a year, and now it's two years later. I came into your life because of your broken hand. You broke your hand. <laughs> no, and I keep falling and apart. And this is quite serious. Honestly, the real reason why I want to make this video is to honor Paul, because if you want to do RV life as a couple, you need to make sure that both of you are there through thick and thin, and, and really to do it all and support each other, because you can't do it out here without your community you can't do it without having a supportive partner yeah. yeah i can't imagine what would happen if if you would have been alone it's solo doing and this sort of had had happened i mean you would have been i yeah i just can't even imagine you couldn't you couldn't move i mean but you, you need to have a supportive partner to do this and be supportive of your partner um, and, and leave a comment about what you have been through as a couple because I think something like this is either going to make you or break you. Mm -hmm. And in our case, I can, I can honestly say that this is the worst thing that we've ever been through. Mm. And I think it's made us grow stronger. Yeah. So you want to tell them what happened on Wednesday? So Liz bent over to get something out of the closet and felt something pop in her back. And and that's where it all began. It was just, it was downhill from there. It felt like I'd actually ripped a hamstring. I was in so much pain. And as the day went on, I actually had to scream into a pillow and sob into a pillow. And it was so hard for Paul to watch. And Still, I mean, just the thought of it. Thursday morning, about 4.30, you said, let's go to the ER, which mm -hmm. was about 30 minutes away. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I've got to get out of this pain. I had Googled it and I, and I heard uh, the word that came up was sciatica. Yeah, the sciatic nerve was being pinched. I guess there's a uh, channel that it runs through, and, and I'm not a doctor. I, I can't speak uh, If you know this. anything about the sciatica stuff, please leave a comment and, and let us know yeah. what you know. Can't even imagine the, what, Exc the excruciating pain that she's going Just through. Just agony. We were in Kentucky on the border of Tennessee. Strunk was the name of the town that we were in, and, and the nearest ER was in Oneida, Tennessee. And little did we know that the, the area that we were in was a uh, heavily... Um, they have a huge drug problem going on. And so when we went into the ER, uh, the doctor walked in, didn't introduce himself, didn't ask us our name, didn't ask you your name. Nothing. Just said, what's the problem? And you, you told him that, you know, you're having back pains. And he, he just basically turned around and walked out. And I will say that they took care of us right away. We never had that's to wait. The, that's the good thing, that they got us in and out it, within... 30 minutes. They gave me a couple shots, gave me a prescription. It was early in the morning. We had to wait about an hour for the pharmacy to open and the drugs that they gave me did not kick in. And I said, I'm just in so much pain. Let's go back. So emergency visit number two, the same ER. This time they gave me a CAT scan and they found that I have an, en an enlarged disc pushing on the nerve. So it's definitely something real. So after that, I did more Googling, and I learned that if that nerve gets pinched too long, there's something, you know, for too long of a time, there's something called drop foot, where you lose your ability to pick your foot up when you walk, and you just kind of drag it because yeah. you're damaging the nerve. Now you may have seen people where they, when they walk, their foot kind of drags. It doesn't, it doesn't do the normal... Um, 
gait that, that uh, a normal person would have, I'm sure that that's probably drop foot. And that would end my running career, oh, my hiking. I mean, yeah. it would just be so awful. Yeah. They said since they were a small regional area, we needed to go to a bigger place to get support, like Knoxville. But for an additional 30 minutes, we could go back to my hometown where I'd have support because we thought that I was going to have to have surgery. Now, you know, I'm. it's Friday. It's day three. This is where Paul just totally saves a day. Now, Paul has to do everything. Not only is he closing up the camper and doing both the inside and outside prep and all the driving, he's also taking care of me. He's cooking every meal. I am bedridden. I could not stand, couldn't sit, could not walk, and even couldn't even get comfortable in bed. There's no campgrounds anywhere because it's October, it's Keeneland, it's full. But okay, my spiritual center, Ahavas Center for Spiritual Living, offered us a parking lot to stay at, which we were fine with because it was so close to the hospital. Right. And if I was going to have surgery, you'd only be a mile away to visit me. Right. It seemed ideal. But as we're getting to town, I asked Liz to call the minister and say, we're like 10 minutes away. When she does, she says, oh, well, you're coming, you're coming today. And I'm driving, but I can hear the conversation. And I'm thinking, oh, no. We... We don't have a place to stay and there's no campgrounds in town. She wanted us to wait another day because they were doing an event there that night. Yeah, and I totally understand that. I mean, they were kind enough to, to let us stay there to begin with. So now I'm thinking, oh, now what do we do? We had gone to the Costco in town a couple of times and I remembered there was a Cabela's right next door. I plugged that into the nav and, and it got us there and I ran into the store and, and explained, you know, briefly what the situation was that I have a medical emergency, I need to get my partner into the ER and I said, I'm, I'm going to have to drop the trailer in your parking lot, is that okay? They were the nicest people at mm -hmm. Cabela's. I can't speak highly enough about the staff at Cabela's in, in, in Lexington. They said, just just do it and take care of her and God bless. Um, so, sorry. I'm <laughs> so, it's tough. I mean, it's really been tough. I have to say that it seemed like every hour we'd look at each other and we'd say, I don't know what to do. And you would come back with, I don't know what to do either. Yeah. I mean, it was so stressful. It still is. I mean, you're you're not out of the woods yet. No. So we go to the ER, got some good care at the ER, got more meds because I didn't have enough to last more than a day. They gave me so little at the first place. Now I had enough to get through the weekend, but they said I don't need surgery. They said that that is something that your nerve has to be pinched for a very, very long time. They said I just basically need to wait it out, and they gave me some steroids and some anti-inflammatory stuff. Yeah. and some stronger meds for pain. So now I had enough drugs that we felt like we were going to go travel. We didn't want to stay in this parking lot. It just didn't seem, even yeah. staying at the spiritual center felt a little bit like a goldfish bulb. There was no sewer there. There was no power. So we'd have been totally running off our generator. It's constant monitoring to make sure it's not running out of gas and that, and, and that I have enough gas on hand. And dumping the gray and, and everything. And dumping I the, mean, yeah. he, he has totally, like I've said before, really stepped up, but he didn't need to have the extra burden of, of having to. I, I just wanted to be in a, in a campground. So we decided to make the drive to Birmingham, Alabama. I was hoping that we could find a place to stop somewhere in between because it was a 440 mile distance. And we usually limit our drives to under 300 miles. Yeah. And I usually drive, you know, 30 to 50% yeah. of the time. Right. I can't yeah. even ride yeah. in the front seat. I'm laying on the back seat. So Nashville was, was about the halfway point. So I'm calling campgrounds around Nashville and, and they're all full. There's no alternative. We either power through or or sleep at a, at a uh, rest stop. So we made it to Alabama at a beautiful campground that I never even got to see, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. I, didn't, I was so bedridden that it, I could just stand up enough to use the toilet and then I'd have to come back so fast um, because it was so painful to make a couple steps walking and sitting. And as a matter of fact, I have, you may see this cut yeah, I didn't punch her into the eye. He did, yeah. Really. It's, it's actually didn't. turning into a black eye. And what that is, is I really needed to brush my teeth, but I couldn't stand up to do it. So I grabbed the toothbrush and what I had been doing, because as soon as I got to the foot of the bed to save steps, I would just fling myself on the bed. 
and somehow the toothbrush caught me right here. Yeah, it, I walked in within a couple of seconds right behind her. She was laying in bed like she is right here, and she's got blood all over her eye. And I'm thinking, what happened? What? How did you get your? How did you get blood all over your eye? It's just it's been so awful. So it, every time that I would get up and use the toilet, it would take me about an hour to recover from it. I'd be in so much pain. Yeah. And so what we realized was it was getting worse. We arrived in Alabama Saturday, and I'm you know taking the drugs, trying not to move, trying to do a little bit of stretching. Sunday turns into Monday and then Tuesday ER number four if you have sciatica or if you've ever had it I'm sending you a hug right now that is just the worst excruciating agonizing pain yeah based on what I've seen I don't I don't <sighs> want any part of this oh my gosh I was out showing off on my motorcycle once and when I was young and doing wheelies and I over rotated and went off the back and landed on my tailbone I've had low back pain pretty much my entire life from that, but nothing like what you're, I mean, you're just, experiencing. I touched my face and all I felt was salt because I was just crying so much. And I said, Paul, I need to get admitted to the hospital. This is crazy. I felt like getting up was aggravating it. I needed to be catheterized. Catheterized? How do you say that? <laughs> I have need, a catheter I, I need to have a catheter so I could be laying flat and get better. So we went to ER number four in Birmingham, Alabama. It was like about five or six in the morning. The doctor was very knowledgeable about what I had. And he said, you don't wanna be in the hospital. You actually don't wanna be laying flat on your back. You wanna be moving around, even though it hurts. He said, you really need to move around. And it takes six to eight weeks to get over this. Maybe it'll be sooner, but he did give me more drugs and more shots. And so that's where we are. This was yesterday that you're mm -hmm. talking about, the, the ER visit. When we woke up this morning, I said, how you feeling? And she said, it's still, it's hurting again. But I have been doing some stretching exercises. I don't know if I overstretched, I actually felt like I gained a little bit yesterday and then lost a little bit today. We decided to stay here. I had made the reservation a couple days ago anticipating that we would have to stay around uh, a fairly large city. Birmingham's got pretty much everything you can imagine. And We've talked about getting off the road, and maybe that's what we'll do, but we're, we're still kind of in the, I don't know what to do, maybe it'll get better. We want to go to the beach in Florida. Maybe we should ride it out. We're going to be at a place two months starting November 1. Maybe we should ride it out till then. I mean, we'd love to hear from you and if, and if, particularly if you've been through this uh, for some tips and advice. But really the overarching thing is if you are on the road as a couple, there will be a crisis. I mean, we don't wish it on you. We, it, we managed to go without a really big crisis for, you know, two years. I mean, this mm -hmm. is the worst that we've gone through. It could happen. So you want to make sure that your relationship is strong enough to handle that. Um, yeah, yeah. Because this has been very challenging for both of us. This, this has definitely been off the charts as far as stress is concerned for me. Yeah. And I'm sure for you, too. I mean, just I... You know, trying to look on the bright side uh, when, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much in agony almost all the time. Phew. But... Yeah. But also grateful. I'm grateful for this guy. I'm grateful that I'm not solo. Um, I couldn't imagine going through this alone. I don't know how anybody could get through this without having somebody there to help them. Right. So if you are solo, you definitely want to have a list of people that you can call to maybe fly in and help you or, you know, have a bus ticket or some way to get to them because you need support. We all need support at some point in our lives. They do have medical insurance that you can buy that will get you from wherever you are to... Uh, traveler's insurance. In traveler's insurance kind of a thing. And they'll move your rig for you. I mean, that's all part of the deal. And I forget what it costs. It was not, it's not cheap. It's something to consider. I'm gonna revisit that now that this has happened. 440 mile drive in one day. That's a personal record that's for you. That's a personal record for me. And one that I hope I never have to do again or or anywhere near that i mean i know truckers do it every day yeah, I, I have uh renewed respect for for you truckers out there that are doing this on a daily basis probably more i mean i mm -hmm. i suspect you're doing 600 miles a day i i don't know if, if you're watching this tell us what the greatest number of miles you've done in, in a day i i hope that you don't think this is a downer it's not meant to be a downer we just want to share we try to keep it real as you as longtime viewers of our channel know we give you the good and the bad this 
unfortunately is one of the bad situations, but but we see it as a uh, teachable a moment. Teachable moment. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I really, because you not just any relationship can survive what we're going through. Yeah. Like I said, it's either going to bring you closer or it's going to tear you apart. Right. Really think about that if you're thinking about hitting the road. Really think about what happens in a crisis. Yeah. 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 What happens when when one person has to do everything and the other person is flat on their back and mm -hmm. and uh, and it could be for weeks. So tell us in the comments what sort of situations have you had to deal with that have tested the strength of your relationship. We'd love to hear from you and we'll see you in the next video.